In the last two lectures, we saw the prerequisites required to understand the linear time invariant systems. In short, they are known as LTI systems. LTI is an abbreviation of linear time invariant and in this presentation, I will introduce LTI systems to you and for this we will use the knowledge we have gathered in the last chapter the basic system properties chapter and if you remember we have discussed 12 different types of systems and out of those 12 systems we will use two systems the LTI system is composed of two types of systems the first one is linear system and the second one is time invariant system the first one is linear system and the second one is time invariant system and because of this only we call it linear time invariant system it is combination of linear and time invariant systems and therefore LTI system will possess the properties of both linear and time invariant systems we already know the linear systems follow the principle of superposition so the LTI system will also follow will also follow the principle of superposition super position this means the LTI system will satisfy both the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity now time invariant systems are those systems in which any delay in input is also reflected in the output so the LTI system will have the output in which the any delay in the input is reflected any delay in the input is reflected in the output so the LTI system will possess the two properties which you can see on your screen and like usual notation which we are following till now the input will be represented by XT and the output will be represented by YT now there is one important parameter known as impulse response the impulse response means the output of the LTI system when the input is an impulse xt is delta t the impulse and then the output of the system for delta t is known as impulse response ht this is the representation of impulse response and the impulse response is used to define the LTI system the impulse response is very important parameter it is used to define the LTI system and the transfer function is also used to define the LTI system the impulse response is in time domain xt delta t y t h t everything written here is in time domain but if you want to calculate the impulse response using the system relationship the relationship between output and input then it will be difficult in time domain that's why we go to the frequency domain using the Laplace transform you can also use the Fourier transform but in this chapter we will mainly use Laplace transform so by using the Laplace transform we go to the frequency domain you will have the system relationship in frequency domain and by using that relationship you can calculate the transfer function so our LTI system is defined using the impulse response HT but impulse response is not given the relationship between yt and xt is given so we will go to the frequency domain using the Laplace transform or using the Fourier transform and by doing this we can easily calculate the transfer function h omega or hs by using the Laplace transform you will get hs and by using the Fourier transform you will get h omega in this chapter we will mainly focus on Laplace transform so our transfer function will be HS and now you want the impulse response you had the relationship between output and input you used the Laplace transform to obtain the transfer function and now you want to go back to the time domain and you can use the inverse Fourier transform or the inverse Laplace transform it will give you the impulse response and now we can easily comment about the other properties of LTI system 
So impulse response and transfer function both are used to define the LTI system and if you have any one of them, if you have the impulse response or you have the transfer function, you can comment about the other properties of LTI system. Now there is one important point which you should remember. The impulse response and the transfer function are only used for LTI systems. If we have a non-LTI system, then we cannot have the transfer function or impulse response for that particular system. In the next lecture, I will explain the process to calculate the transfer function. I will explain what is a transfer function and I will take few examples to make you understand how to calculate the transfer function. And while taking the examples, I will also take the systems which are not LTI systems and we will try to calculate the transfer function and we will find the calculation of transfer function is not possible when the system is non-LTI system. So I hope this point is clear to you and this is all in the introduction of linear time invariant systems. In the last two lectures, we have already discussed the process to find out if the given system is LTI system or not and I have already explained what is Laplace transform, how to calculate the Laplace transform, the formula of Laplace transform, how to find out the inverse Laplace transform and the list of important transforms. So this is all in this lecture. See you in the next one.